Hi, I'm Koshan and this is Frank. Today we have a great demo to show you on how easy it is to use our latest no-code environment to teach a simple pick and palletize application. Epson robots are known for their ease of use. See the link above to watch our previous video where we teach you how to use our Epson RC Plus development environment. RC Plus is offered with all our robots. What is new is the addition of RC Plus Express, which enables users to teach robotic solutions with little to no programming software experience. Today we'll be teaching from this PC, but you can also use a handheld PC tablet. Helping us with the demo today, we have a T6 series, Scara, a four axis robot. This is perfect for most pick and place applications. The controller is built into the base of the robot. It can run on 110 or 220 volts. And for the end of arm, we have signal and even powered hand IO. This particular model has 6 kg max payload and a 600 millimeter reach. For under $10,000, you're getting an exceptional value product without compromising the industrial features you expect from Epson. Let's get started by launching RC Plus Express. What you will see is that we can choose to connect to a physical robot or one in the virtual environment. You can create the application offline using the included 3D simulator, but since we have a robot here today, let's go ahead and use the real one. Establish the connection between the robot and PC or tablet. Notice that it automatically knows what kind of robot you have. Let's explore the top ribbon here for a moment before we create our program. Let's ensure the joints of the robot are free so I can position the robot by hand. There is a break on the Z-axis to keep it from falling. To move up and down, all you need to do is press the brake release button. On this top ribbon, there's also the e-stop tab. Notice when I press the emergency stop, it lights up. This status can be reset after I release the e-stop. Scrolling over to the settings, we want to make sure our end of arm tool is set up and working correctly. Using the drop down menu, you can see we have two types of tools, either a mechanical gripper or as used on this demo, a suction hand. We set these up ahead of time. Let's check it by pressing grip. It holds the part and turns on and then releases. Okay, that works. Let's move on and explore the motion of the robot. Note you will need the motors on and lock all joints to jog the robot. You can jog using a single joint or using the world coordinates. Let's jog a joint first so we can see what is happening. Let's choose joint one and jog it. Did you see that? At the bottom here, we can choose the speed and distance traveled by every time the jog button is pressed. Notice it says one degree or 10 degree, that is how much it will change. This is great when you need to make small adjustments. You can make a continuous move as well that will let you sweep the arm. Now let's change the jogging method to world. We can jog the z-axis down to our part on the table here. Note that as we're going down the z-axis, which will be a larger negative value. This is because the z0 is when the shaft is fully retracted. Okay. We jog close to the pick position. Let's change this to the smaller increment until we just touch the part. Great, now let's pull all this together and create our very first simple palletizing program. Let's go back to the home page and press the create button. We have created several templates for you to choose from. Let's select the simple palletize program. In this case, we want to show a simple palletizing program, so let's go ahead and choose that template. Give it a name and a quick description.
What's great is the template has given a starter program that you can modify to quickly get this pick and place in action. Let's click on the edit button. We have three sections. One is the teaching blocks, the middle is the flow of the commands, and on the right is what we call the focus assist tool. Let's try to go ahead and start the program. See how it will not start? The compiler knows there are missing elements and will not run. To help you along, there are bright orange X's showing you what steps are not complete. So let's focus on the move to command. This first command is to give the robot a starting position. We have some motion options. Let's use the help button to learn a little bit more about them. Here we like the jump command because we can easily move in this gated motion and raise the Z axis without teaching additional points. Note here that offset is a negative number. In order to teach the point, let's press the jog and teach button. Let's do this by jogging to where we want our starting point to be. You can also give this a name that is meaningful to you. Lastly, in this move, we want to set our speed and acceleration for the move. Let's set these to mid, where we can come back later to speed up or slow down if needed. Let's look at the loop command. Again, we have a different option. Let's use that help button again to learn how this command works. We'll keep this as the standard infinite loop. Now let's expand the pick from command by pressing the side arrow. Let's go ahead and teach the point where we will pick the block, but this time let's use S free and manually move the robot to teach the point. Notice on our screen, the orange highlights have gone away. We can turn the gripper on to verify we're picking up the part. Okay, it looks good. Make sure to keep holding on to the part. Now we can focus on the place position using the palette wizard. First, we enter how many rows and columns are in our palette. Today we'll teach a two by three. Next, we enter the four corner positions of the palette. We can set these by jogging, teaching, or adding in the points. Since I have my part in the gripper, we can use that to quickly locate the positions. Lastly, we set the direction to build the palette. In this case, let's choose A to B. Don't forget to hit that save button. Let's go ahead and release the part and put it back in the pick position. Now we can run the program by selecting the start button. Whenever making code changes, it is always a best practice to run at reduced power and speed the first time. Now that we are confident it is working, we can go back and adjust the speeds if necessary, or even add more functionality like palletize and depalletize function. If you would like to experience this for yourself, reach out to your local sales rep or download the free trial version today.